are gonna do something a little different today. And I figured in honor of it being back to school season, we are gonna do a little very long girl talk. And I'm gonna give you my five secrets to live your best life to feel your best and to look your best. If you've been watching my videos, you already know, I have to start with this one. Journaling is the best thing you can do for yourself because journaling will strengthen the relationship that you have with yourself because I think seeing your thoughts on paper and working through different emotions, just the best way to build like self-trust. Also a really good way to emotionally regulate yourself when like you're triggered or you're stressed about something, writing it down, just write it down. I think that nowadays it's so easy to kind of like outsource all of your issues and talk about things with your friends or your family, but I think that getting to the root of like what you want to do is the most important because ultimately like this is your life and your decisions impact you the most and not your friends or your family. And I just think that journaling is a good way to kind of like reduce the noise of other people's opinions about your life. Next up, we have something that quite literally like just changed the game for me. And I used to hate working out, but ever since I implemented lower impact workouts, my mental health got so much better. My physical health got so much better. I feel so much like stronger than I've ever have. I also, guys, this is also coming from someone who did not play sports in high school. Like I've never played sports. I mean, I did play sports when I was like in middle school, but not high school, definitely not college. What really got me into it was actually like going to classes because classes I feel like hold me accountable. I mean, not saying that you don't need classes to do like Pilates or yoga or anything like that because there's so much online content where if you go on YouTube, you can search up like a 10 minute Pilates workout and they're so good. So I highly recommend that because it's also one of the best ways to regulate your nervous system. Even just like going for a walk. I always say that emotions are like energy in motion and walking, like doing a little hot girl walk can make you feel like a million bucks. Like you put on some Beyonce, you go on a walk, you come back, confidence through the roof. It's sleep hygiene. I used to struggle with my sleep so much. I got an aura ring because I was like, I knew that I wasn't getting good quality sleep and I was like, something's gotta give. So I got the aura ring and then I did a deep dive on so much research about sleep. So let me put you on because that's what I'm here for. The number one tip that I got was that you need to have your room dark, cool, and quiet. And eating like two hours before bed is the best way to go. A tip that has actually made me stop waking up at 3 a.m. every night was having carbs at dinner. Like having carbs at dinner has made me sleep through the night. I'm not even sure really what the science behind that is. I think because it's slower to digest, that is my number one tip because it also helps with um, your blood sugar regulation. And I think that is what causes you to wake up at 3 a.m. It's also your cortisol levels. So if you're stressed out and you're waking up at 3 a.m., like you gotta do some yoga, do some slow impact workouts, try journaling, try these tips that I'm talking about because regulating your cortisol levels, I know that people talk about it online like ad nauseum, but it really is very important. And sleep is also the foundation of your life and having good quality sleep will just radically improve your mental clarity, everything, everything. Two quick things about sleep that I learned is try looking at the sun first thing when you wake up and then try limiting your alcohol because that can really impact your sleep. Pretty sure it's even like having like one or two glasses of wine or something can even, you can have a shitty night's sleep because of that. Next on my list, which I don't think anyone's going to be surprised about, is reading. You guys know I love to read. So if you need to be held accountable for reading, join my book club. And it's really fun. We meet once a, once a month. And we have the best time. So if you want to join my book club, there's a link in the description. My number one tip when it comes to reading is to find a genre that you actually enjoy reading. Like you don't have to read all of these like, okay, this is actually me talking to my younger self where it's like, you don't actually have to read all of those like literary fiction books that like make you look really cool and smart. 
who fucking cares if you want to read like a YA book or like a fantasy book or a smut book? Like stop judging yourself so harshly and just read a good fucking book that's good in your eyes. Reading is subjective because all of us have different opinions about what's good and what's bad. So just read something that you enjoy because I'm telling you anything is better than scrolling on your phone for hours before bed because your mind is a sponge. It's gonna take in any information that you tell it. So you might as well be feeding it good, positive things. That's like another random piece of advice that I have is be so selective with the content that you are consuming because that shapes your life. The content that you're consuming on a regular basis directly impacts your mental health. And I'm just, I'm very, very passionate about limiting your scrolling and being very mindful of the influencers that you follow and the content you're consuming. It all directly affects your quality of life and your mental health and I'm just trying to look out for you. If I could go back in time and change anything, it would be to stop reading so many self-help books before bed because I constantly felt like I needed to be somewhere that I wasn't and instead of just focusing on where I was at that present moment, I was worrying about problems that I weren't even a thing yet. And it was just a waste of time. I just wasted my own time being anxious about these things or trying to feel like I was like missing out on something or like trying to get ahead when I felt like I was running out of time. But you're not. You're not running out of time. You have plenty of time chill out. Last thing that I'm going to talk about that I grouped into one is meditating and affirmations. <sighs> you guys, this one, I could make probably a separate video just talking about this and how much it has changed my life. But after we have regulated our nervous system, meditating is so much easier. I also think that guided meditations on YouTube are heavily slept on. There are so many good guided meditations on YouTube that you can look up, like look up like abundance meditations, self-love meditations, any type of visualization you wanna do is on YouTube. I recommend doing it before you go to bed or first thing when you wake up instead of picking up your phone. Do a guided meditation on YouTube. Your, <laughs> your life will change because your energy will change. One thing I've learned about affirmations is repetition will dissolve any disbelief you have when it comes to affirmations like if you struggle with self-esteem issues or you don't feel confident i want you to repeat affirmations like for 10 minutes a day three times a day and just drill it into your brain like i want you to go crazy with these affirmations and i think that journaling is also a good way of pinpointing like where your limiting beliefs lie if you have any, you might not. But if you do struggle with self-esteem, affirmations are the easiest way to rewire your brain into a new thinking pattern. And oh, you can actually change the way that you view yourself through affirmations and any area of your life. If you're new to affirmations, I recommend playing affirmations while you're like getting ready in the morning or doing your skincare at night and like brushing your teeth, just like play a uh, affirmation tape on YouTube while, while you're doing that. And then you're letting your brain just like ease into and like taking in the statements in not so much of a forceful way. Because I think when you try to force affirmations on yourself, it can almost do the opposite because if your brain doesn't believe something, it's gonna try to reject it with like all of its might and that can feel really uncomfortable. So I think kind of like trying to ease your way into these affirmations is the best route to take. With that being said, I'm gonna stop rambling because I could go on for 20 more minutes telling you guys all of my little tidbits about life and habits and whatnot. But I'm gonna leave you with three resources that I have. If this video resonated with you, I highly recommend reading Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Joe Dispenza and The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy. Those two books will, you need to like read them with an open mind, but if you read them, 
your life will change. And the last one is a, is a playlist that I actually made. It's on Spotify and it's all of my mindset wellness playlists in one place. And all of them are 10 out of 10. I highly recommend listening to every single one of them. They are my personal favorites. Anyway, let me know if you like this little video and I will see you guys in my next vlog.